Greetings this day to the people of God from St. Matthew's Church in Glendale, California, as we join together for our daily devotion. Let us open with a word of prayer. Merciful Father, may our acts of penitence bring forgiveness and open our hearts to your love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. St. Paul writes to the church in Rome, None is righteous, not, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside, together they have gone wrong. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. In their paths are ruin and misery, and the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And a reading from St. John's Gospel, the fifth chapter, Jesus said, I can do nothing on my own authority. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I bear witness to myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who bears witness to me, and I know that the testimony which he bears to me is true. You sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Not that the testimony which I receive is from man, but I say this that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But the testimony which I have is greater than that of John, for the works which the Father has granted me to accomplish, these very works which I am doing, bear me witness that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness to me. His voice you have never heard, his form you have never seen, and you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe him whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness to me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive glory from men, but I know that you have not the love of God within you. I have come in my Father's name, and you did not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe, who receive glory from one another, and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. It is Moses who accuses you, on whom you set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe Moses' writings, how will you believe my words? C.S. Lewis writes, I hope you will not misunderstand what I am going to say. I am not preaching, and heaven knows I do not pretend to be better than anyone else. I am only trying to call attention to a fact, the fact that this year, or this month, or more likely this very day, we have failed to practice ourselves the kind of behavior we expect from other people. There may be all sorts of excuses for us. That time you were so unfair to the children was when you were very tired. That slightly shady business about the money, the one you have almost forgotten, came when you were very hard up. And what you promised to do for old so-and-so and have never done, 
Well, you would never have promised if you had known frightfully how busy you were going to be. And as for your behavior to your spouse or sibling, if I knew how irritating they could be, I would not wonder at it. And who am I anyways? I am just the same. That is to say, I do not succeed in keeping the law of nature very well, and the moment anyone tells me I am not keeping it, there starts up in my mind a string of excuses as long as your arm. The question at the moment is not whether they are good excuses. The point is that they are one more proof of how deeply, whether we like it or not, we believe in the law of nature. If we do not believe in decent behavior, why should we be so anxious to make excuses for not having behaved decently? The truth is, we believe in decency so much, we feel the rule of law pressing on us so, that we cannot bear the fact that we are breaking it, and consequently we try to shift the responsibility. For you notice that it is only for our ba bad behavior that we find all these explanations. It is only our bad temper that we put down to being tired or worried or hungry. We put our good temper down to ourselves. These then are the two points I wanted to make. First, that human beings all over the earth have this curious idea that they ought to behave in a certain way and cannot really get rid of it. Secondly, that they do not in fact behave in that way. They know the law of nature, they break it. These two facts are the foundation of all clear thinking about ourselves and about the universe we live in. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and you forgive the sins of all who repent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that, sorrowing over our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect forgiveness and peace through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen.